All right, so far we discussed what a hash function is. We have seen construction methods like Merkle Damgaard sponge function or hash function from a block cipher. We focused on dedicated designs like MD4, MD5, SHA1, RIPE MD, SHA2, and SHA3. Now it is time to move on to lightweight hash functions. So uh, we are going to uh, look at two standardization organizations. NIST is from United States and ISO is international standardization organization. So at the NIST site, there is no lightweight cryptographic algorithm at all. So not even a block cipher, stream cipher, or a hash function. But you know that uh, we are discussing this for a long time. It's currently organizing a lightweight cryptography standardization process. So currently we have 10 finalists and these are actually authenticated encryption algorithms. So these are encryption algorithms. But the good thing is that when you need to provide authentication, you generally, uh, design an algorithm that works like a message authentication code. So you have to put something that works like a hash function. And the good thing is that the bold algorithms here actually allow hashing. So if one of them becomes a standard, maybe in the future, hashing version of that will also be standard. But even if it is not going to be a standard, for instance, if ASCOM becomes a NIST winner of this competition, uh, people, most probably will be confident to use ASCON in the hashing mode. So a lot of designs allow hashing. I think I put elephant here as not bold, but italic. So it supports hashing, but uh, I think the hashing uh, size is small, so it doesn't provide enough security. So if you want, you can modify elephant and provide longer output and uh, provide hashing if you are interested. Okay, so at the NIST side, we don't have a standard, but it looks like we are going to have a standard in the future. At the IOC part, we have actually standards from 2016. So this uh, uh, standardization number is this. So 2016 determines the year. So this specifies three hash functions suitable for applications requiring lightweight cryptographic implementations. The first one is photon a lightweight hash function with permutation sizes of these numbers, 100, 144, and so on, bits. And uh, these are you know, permutation size, but the output size, which is the hash message digest length, is as follows, 80-bit, 128, 160, 224, and 256 bits. So depending on your permutation size, you actually provide hash output. Spongent is the second standard. This is a lightweight hash function. Again, it has a permutation sizes, which are larger than the most of the outputs. So hashing codes of length 88 and so on. So you might think that this is not, this might look like a typo because you might expect 80 like here. Actually the output size is 88, but the security is 80 bits anyway. The third one is Lezamta W. This is a lightweight hash function with a permutation size of 384 bits, computing a hash code of length 256 bits. So this standard, I just like checked yesterday, was last reviewed in 2022 and confirmed. So therefore this standard remains as the same as the 2016 version. So it is current and you know, it will stay, this means that at least three or four years, it will stay like this. But of course, having very short hashes might cause a problem, you know, due to pre-image, second pre-image, or uh, collision attacks with brute force attacks because the length is small. So if you are going to use a very short hash output, then maybe you need to, you, sh you should use it in a scenario where you don't need a collision resistance or maybe you need security just for a few minutes and so on. Let's start with photon. It was designed by Jean Go, Thomas Perrin and Ashal Postman. Suitable for extremely constrained devices such as passive RFID tags. About 1,120 gate equivalents for 64-bit collision resistance. So this means that the hash output is 128 bits. So you will have 128-bit security for pre-image and second pre-image attacks. 
So for comparison, they also provided uh, gate equivalents for SHA-1, SHA-2, and SHA-3. As you can see, Photon requires very small area compared to these algorithms on the hardware at the ASIC side. This is important because RFID tags generally have uh, between 1,000 to 10,000 gates. So you might say that, okay, if I have 10,000 gates, I can put SHA-1 there anyway. But the thing is that uh, the RFID tag is not just only for hashing. You will put a lot of algorithms, a lot of capabilities there. Only uh, 10 or 20% of these gates are allowed for uh, security. So you generally have between 200 gate equivalents to 2000 gates, okay? So this is why you need a lightweight design. So the algorithm specifications is as follows. Block sizes supports five block sizes depending on the output length, message digest length. Rate R is as follows. You will see that this rate is actually the difference between these two numbers, okay? So it is like a sponge function. So this is actually your internal state. But since you are going to provide 80-bit output, so this is your rate and capacity measurements, okay? Number of runs are 12, and this is a sponge-like construction with AES-like internal permutation. So you actually take something like a block cipher, but use it as a permutation inside the sponge construction. So maybe I should go very, way back to look at constructions and show, remind you how a sponge construction works for hash functions. Recall that we had the internal state in the IOC standards, it has this like a block size, but actually it depends on what you're talking about. But recall that R is your rate, C is capacity. So you have an internal state, you put, um, you feed the message blocks with R bits because this is your rate, but once you feed it, you perform your sponge function. So photon is actually at this stage. By F, we will replace it with photon and run an AS-like permutations, which we will talk in a minute. So this way you feed the input, you update this uh, the internal state by using the F function again and again. And at the end, you provide output. Again, uh, R, bits, R bits in time, okay? Let's go back. So the permutation, so now we are talking about the F function I showed you in the picture. So you have an internal state, F function actually permutes. So the permutation of photon, one round of it works like this. You have this internal state, D to D cells. Choice of D depends on your block size and so on. So D, D is a variable here. First you add constant. Then you perform subcells. This means that every uh, S bit here is sent to a S box and the output is written here. At the next stage, you perform shift rows. The top row is not shifted. The first row is rotated one box to the left and so on, okay? And finally, you have mixed columns. This means that you are actually performing a matrix multiplication. So it looks like a lot like AES, but instead of a four by four design, sorry, eight by eight design, like in the case of AES. Uh, no, in the AES, it was four by four, right? Because you're replacing every box with a byte. Yes, so four rows for columns in the AES representation. And in that scenario, you had uh, bytes. So in this scenario, you have more than uh, four rows or four columns. It depends on your you know, choice of parameters. So that was about photons. So let's move on to the second standard called Spongent. It was designed by Andre Bogdanov, Miroslav Nezevich, Gregor Leander, Denis Toz, Kerem Varigi, and Ingrid Verhaveyde. So in this case, you, I already mentioned this. You have a permutation size like this. Message digest length is this. And they provide its smallest implementation in ASIC. And it, they show that you actually require very small amount of gate equivalence. Of, score. of course, these numbers depends on the uh, message digest length. So it also, once you choose the digest length, you also choose the permutation size. So once the permutation size increases, 
your internal state increases, so you have to require more gate coolness to you know, implement at the end. So the number of runs depends on your choice of parameters. It is between 45 and 140. This is also, again, a sponge-like construction, but instead of AES, they have a present-like permutation. So it works like this. This P, actually, a present-like permutation. Okay. So you have, again, your R rate and capacity. You feed the message blocks here, then provide hashing output. So this picture from the paper where they propose uh, spongent. Okay. And this results, this table is also from the uh, paper that, that uh, proposed spongent. So you have actually 13 variants, depends on the you know, hashing output size, permutation size, so, and the you know, rate. So there are many variants. Here they represent the output bits, number of runs also here. And you know this way, uh, they show you how much security in terms of bit they provide. So for pre-image and second pre-image resistance, for instance, the bit securities are like this. So you have many variants. You have to choose one of them depending on the security claims and also you know, for the performance. So the bit permutation layer of Spongent is as follows. As you can see, there's a per present like uh, permutation, but now the internal state is a lot larger than the present because present block size was 64 bits. We have larger state here. So this is why you have to perform a lot of SBox operations. In present, it was 16. Now we have more bits. Okay. Here is a comparison of this spongent with photon. So maybe we should look at the area in gate equivalence. So depending on the parameter you choose, you can do it with as small as 738 gate equivalence. And for the photon, you can do it with 865. But of course, uh, once you optimize it for the area, then you lose performance. So your throughput becomes really low. So sometimes instead of trying to achieve the lowest uh, area uh, implementation, you might actually spend more area and this way also increase the throughput. Okay. So you have to choose which parameter you want to use depending on how much throughput you need. Because in this scenario, the throughput is really small, you know, 0 0.81 kilobits per second is not huge, right? So there's also a, a figure comparison of uh, spongent from the designers. So at this part of the graph, we have area in terms of gate equivalence at 100 kilohertz. And these are the uh, different type of spongent variants. You know, I said that 13, there are 13 variants. So the smallest ones require a lot less gate. But if you have more area, then you may go upward and, you know, choose a variant that is, that provides more security. Okay, this is also another table from the uh, spongent paper. So this is the area of spongent family compared using four different standard cell libraries. Here you can see different cell libraries and number of gate equivalents that are required for this implementation. Okay. So you can implement the same algorithm in different versions. So if you want to optimize for area, you know, in that scenario, the data bit is four bit. But if you increase the data bit, data paths then the required area increases also and so on. But their main aim is to show that whatever you choose, it is better than SHA-1 and SHA-2, okay. The third one is the Zamta LW is designed by Soshishi Hiroise, Kota Ideguchi, Hidenori Kuwakado, Toro Wada, Bart Prenel, and Hirotaka Yoshida. So uh, Lezamta can be implemented efficiently on both of a dedicated hardware and an 8-bit CPU in a microcontroller. So about 80,000 gates on 
90 nanometer technology for 120 bit security. Use the new mode of a block cipher called LW1. Key size is smaller than the block size. And message digest length is this. So since it works like a block cipher, you can use a secret key too. That is the main idea. So type is block cipher mode with AS like SBox and mix column in function Q. Yes, I think here we have a picture like this. So instead of uh, permutation like in the previous cases, so previous two designs were, you know, uh, sponge constructions. Now this one is a block cipher construction. So recall that a block cipher actually has two inputs. One of them is plain text and the other one is the secret key. So in a hash function, we don't have a secret key. So you can either use the IV, start with the IV and so on. So this way you feed the message, perform the uh, encryption like operation, which is uh, something like AES. They use SPACs and mixed columns and so on. So inside this encryption, one round is as follows. You know, these are the data pads. There are uh, permutations and you know SBox operations inside Q and so on. So it like it looks like a phase style cipher, but operations are like AES like operations. Okay. So they also provide some uh, area and throughput results, and they obtain a very good throughput compared to other designs, but they also require a lot of gate equivalence and so on. Yeah. So at this point, they focus more on like 8-bit microcontrollers and so on. Yeah. And this is the uh, RAM estimates of on a low cost 8-bit CPUs. These are the uh, amount of bytes you need as memory. So you might think that these are really small, for instance, Commodore 64 has 64 kilobytes. So we are now in 2022. So requiring this amount of bytes sounds like, you know, something not important because it is, we are talking about a few hundred bytes at most, but we have really, really small devices where you might not have even this much amount of free memory. Okay. This is why they are showing that they can implement on an 8-bit microcontroller with 50 bytes of RAM requirements, okay? So they also compare its amount of memory they use. So uh, on the lightweight side, you have to focus on many things. So area on hardware is just one of the things, but you also have to focus on you know power consumption, throughput, latency, uh, memory requirements, code size, and so on and so forth. 